All right, and welcome to the DVL webinar series, Making Underwater Navigation with the DVL, a piece of cake, one webinar at a time. Today, we're going to talk about from zero to 20 knots in 20 minutes or less. But before we start, um, please note that you have a number that you can call on the welcome street or use your PC speaker to listen. Um, you can choose that from the panel of the Citrix um, GoToMeeting uh, panel that you should have on the side of the screen at this point. Um, all attendees will be muted uh, until the Q&A at the end, and we'll have a five minutes uh, open Q&A um, at the end of this session. Um, I wanted to point out that uh, to get in contact with us, you have several ways to do this. For sales, there is RDI sales at toyota.com, uh, 858-842-2600. Um, you can go on the website, uh, dvlnav.com, www.dvlnav.com. Uh, you have several places for support. Uh, our USA office for support is rdifs at .com, uh, with the main phone number 2600 and for after hours 270. So that's 858-842-2700 for after hours tech support. You can also call the European office if it's easier for you. Um, their phone number is plus 33492-110-930 and their email address is rdiefs at toyota.com there's just one e difference here um you have different places for your support like i said you got uh usa main office in the power over here we got an office in uh europe and france and we have also an office in shanghai uh recently um uh, we've been to uh, brazil and opened a uh, an aftermarket service center over there uh don't hesitate to contact us to get in contact with those people note that there's a lot of uh representative uh, all around the world Australia, Russia, anywhere you can look for um, and you can get in contact with those people. We have a link on the website that links you to all the representative. All right, so let's get started. Uh, from zero to 20 knots in 20 minutes or less. First, when you receive your DVL, um, you're going to have a bunch of different parts in there. Uh, in your shipping case, you'll find the DVL, um, some cable, either pigtail or full-blown um, power communication IO cable. Uh, you have some spare parts, and in some case, you'll have some power um, device. You'll have a few CDs, uh, including some tools. Very important to keep those around for testing. Setting up your DVLs as easy as one, two, three, one, connect, two, power, and three, go. In a bit more detail, connect. Uh, you'll have to connect the IO cable uh, to your computer where you're going to run the software to do the testing. Uh, you'll have to connect the other end, the wet end, to your DVL and the power cable to the power strip to the AC outlet. Um, we show a bucket of water because it's pretty important to have one for the built-in test. For power, uh, just make sure you're using the proper power. Uh, we have different models with different amp input power. For instance, the Explorer DVLs take from 12 to 24 volts. The Pioneer and the Workhorse go from 24 to 48 volts. And go. Uh, what it means by that is that the DVL will automatically find the bottom and dynamically adapt to its environment. It will go into some kind of a search mode, look for the bottom, lock on it, and then from that point on, it will dynamically adapt to its environment. Your top speed at this point is 20 knots already. Want to go a little faster? You can turn it 45 degrees. Beam 3 is usually the beam that is referenced to the center line of the vehicle. Uh, it's therefore usually pointing forward. You can turn that beam 3 45 starboard or port 45 degrees up of the center line and that will actually get your top speed to go up to 28 knots. As it turns out, turning it 45 degrees will improve your stern deviation and reduce the ringing on the DVL, which uh, limits its ability to water profile very close to the transducer or get very close to the seabed. Need to go even faster and contact our application engineer will assist you with pushing the limits successfully to the speed that you need. Why are we number one in the market? Well, because at that speed, you need every measurements to be accurate. Our broadband DVLs have the best single ping accuracy on the market. A few more things you need to know. What the DVL measures for you. The purpose of acoustic Doppler sonar is to measure water in motion and motion water. That is, we can measure waves, current, velocities, 
as well as velocity over the seafloor, bottom track, and velocity relative to the water, water layer, water track, or speed through water. DVL motion in water. So the DVL will resolve um, which way am I going in the three axis, how fast, where I've been, and it will aid in direct positioning, station keeping, and obstacle avoidance. Here we show a typical uh, vehicle with a up-looking ADCP and a down-looking DVL that is too far from the seabed and is currently doing some speed to water measurement, water track or water layer. And as it's coming closer to the, the coastal environment, uh, closer to the seabed, it's going to be able to lock into the bottom and switch to bottom track, which is more accurate, and continue water profiling up, getting currents from the top right. And then as it's coming very close to the seabed in shallow environment, it will continue to be able to bottom track and also profile above uh, with the, uh, the top right. Water in motion. Uh, so the DVL can actually be used to do water profile measurements. Uh, so that's the representation of the Ekman current in our new software called Velocity. And that's the three-dimensional representation of the current magnitude what your DVL measure? Bottom track velocity, speed of the ground, water track velocity, speed through water, current profiling, which is an option, altitude, tilt correct and slant, vertical and slant range to bottom for each beam, distance made good, acoustic intensity, which is also called signal strength, flow homogeneity, through the air velocity, data quality, that is correlation, bottom and water track center deviation, temperature, heading pitch, roll, pressure, depth, Speed of sound, calculated or measured, time to bottom, and water sample, which is uh, available in the PAVS DVL. Time to bottom and water sample, which is only available in the Pioneer DVL, um, allows you for a tighter integration with the uh, inertial navigation system, um, as it allows you, uh, when using a state machine, to tie up directly the time when the measurement was done at the bottom or inside the water column uh, back to the respective pitch roll and heading measured by the IMU. Specification, choosing the right DVL for the job. Um, so the question to resolve here is how deep do you need to go? That's the first question usually. So depending if you want to go down to the margin of the trench or just to a um, shallow coastal environment, we have several type of DVL with different depth rating. Um, for instance, the workhorse uh, DVL product line can go all the way down to 7,000 meters, 7 kilometers. Uh, it has actually been pushed to 10 kilometers um, for some sp specific custom jobs. Um, the Explorer DVLs can go all the way down to 4,000 meters, and the rest of the product line uh, is currently limited to um, a kilometer. And we're trying to push that to 3 or 6K in the very near future. So stay tuned. Another question to resolve is how close or how far off the seabed do you need to fly? And usually in survey mode, there are some requirements that are, are of the distance to the seabed or distance to the surveyed area. This will drive the frequency of the system that you'll pick or the system itself. Uh, for instance, the workhorse here, we show 1,200, 600, 300. Uh, the export DVL is a 600 kilohertz. Uh, this is the representation of the PAVS uh, Pioneer DVL 300, um, 150 kilohertz, and 38 kilohertz. Those are different range capabilities. Then in green, we show the bottom track ranges, and in uh, pink, we show the water profile ranges. Uh, for the 38 kilohertz, which is the most powerful system we have at this point, you can obtain up to pretty close to three kilometers of bottom tracking range. Um, and we can go as low as uh, the 1200 kilohertz, which can actually bottom track to 25 meters. So you'll have to pick and choose your system based on the requirement that you have, uh, based on the distance off the seabed. Another thing to consider is the accuracy versus the range versus the frequency. Going to lower frequency will give you more range. 300 kilohertz, for instance, will give you 200 meters of range. 1200 kilohertz will give you 30 meters of range. Um, but in terms of precision, uh, going higher the other way around, higher in frequency, uh, will give you higher precision. So for more range, you have to trade off the precision of the velocity measurement a little bit. Um, also, when you go lower in frequency to get more range, you actually will not be able to come as close as a higher frequency system to the seabed. So if you need to track very, very close to the seabed or to a target, 
uh, you might want to consider that requirement here okay so there's always a trade-off in terms of specification uh, we provide a lot of specification for product that you buy um, so we classify usually those based on frequencies and we provide the velocity range so that's the maximum speed you can collect uh, right off the gate uh, plus or minus 10 meters per second for all those products uh, no matter the frequency and in terms of accuracy that's that's what you're buying the system for um, we have a dynamic and a static uh, accuracy and so the dynamic part is based on velocity that's plus or minus 0.4 percent of the velocity that you're seeing that is seen by the dvl plus or minus 0.2 centimeters per second this accuracy is the result the best result you can get from your dvl um, we also provide a single ping precision so single single ping precision is the noise on the measurement inaccuracy on the measurement uh, from one single ping one single snapshot of that speed um, and we provided a different um, speed one meter per second to three meters per second and five meters per second as you see the faster you go the more the noise on uh, the output now if you were to average pings together because they're in, in, in completely independent uh, you will be able to drive down the noise and you would at some point plateau the performance to this value here which is called the long-term accuracy or accuracy we call it long-term because after a certain amount of time and a certain amount of averaging you can actually reach that long-term accuracy we also provide you with the minimum altitude and maximum altitude for those products note that uh, some of those have the ability to add some uh, features uh, to the code so that it would actually come a little closer to the seabed for some applications um, this is a new generation products uh, paths DVL or pioneers we have uh, three frequencies for the systems they're uh, brand new uh, for the 338 uh, so here we can actually show the same thing velocity range is uh, plus or minus 9.5 meters per second to 10 meters per second that's the maximum speed you can measure and here you can see the accuracy of those systems uh, which changes with uh, the frequencies um, note that we provide a single ping precision as well as I explained before uh, sometimes there are differences quite a lot of differences between products sometimes there are not or less than you can imagine for instance from a 38 kilohertz at 3 meters per second between a 38 kilohertz would give you 2.5 uh, kilometers of range um, and a system that give you 500 meters of range there's not a lot of differences in terms of single ping precision between those two and remember again that you can average pings together to drive down this value to come closer to this value okay so we'll give you also the minimum altitude and the maximum altitude for those products again here there's an option for the phase ray uh, explorer to go from uh, 0.5 meter uh, minimum altitude to 0 .30, 0 0.3 meters uh, minimum altitude modes of operation we got several modes of operation the first one it mentions the turkey mode that is default uh, that is you set and forget um, you actually set it to the default settings uh, save and next time you power cycle your DVL it will go back to the default settings and start pinging um, another way to do this is to set it to the user custom setup and save and next time you power cycle your system it will actually go back to the user settings and start pinging with those settings specific setup uh, dynamic um, you can go say with the default settings and you can tweak the setup on the fly that is say you actually fly closer and closer to the seabed it doesn't make sense to water profile for a range of 100 meters when you're flying at 2 meters off of the seabed uh, so you might want to reduce the, the, the water profile range uh, from your DVL as you come in closer to the seabed to ping a little faster or save a little bit of energy. Um, you can also increase the number of pings as you come in closer to the seabed to average them together and get a more accurate uh, velocity measurement, which is quite handy when you're very close to the seabed. And also you have more time because now you're pinging much faster as you're closer to the seabed. So. Uh, those new navigation, uh, those new DVLs, uh, new generation DVLs that we have can actually be dynamically set up on the fly. Triggered. Um, each DVL can receive a trigger. Uh, it can be an ASCII character or a low latency trigger. Um, the low latency on the workhorse can react within 300 microseconds of the pulse coming in. Uh, that's the fastest way to trigger your DVL. If you have to synchronize that with other type of sensor on board, that's a very good option to consider. 
and the last mode of operation is master or master slave so dvl takes the control or dvl becomes the slave in the case of a workhorse we have a dvl to dvl mode called the rds cube mode where one of the dvl would be the master the other one would be the slave and in, in terms of the uh, new generation dvls we have a low latency trigger in and out which give you pretty much a lot of uh, which give you a lot of flexibility for master slave setup output we have several output formats binary ascii nmea uh, here it's a snapshot of what the binary looks like if you were to use our uh, uh, proprietary software called bbtalk and you were to actually see what's coming in the screen on the screen so it would be binary characters kind of random looking characters um, this is the pd0 output for a uh, snapshot here which contains a lot of information all coded in binary so you would have to decode this um, spe specific code uh, we got ascii outputs as well here it's, uh, it's a snapshot of the pd6 which provide uh, outputs in instrument ship and earth frames as well as range time of the ping pitch and roll heading etc all in te ascii text very easy to read um, and nmea uh, which uh, here's one example we have a m many more enemy sentences that we can output this one for instance uh, provides you with uh, the course of a ground the speed of a ground the wrench to bottom etc when you choose your output formats you have to consider that you might uh, 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 need specific output formats for specific outputs to be available uh, the pd0 is the default output it's a binary output as indicated by this table and it contains all of those values here um, that is almost everything except for distant over ground everything that can be provided by the dvl is provided by the pd0 um, including the water profile information that's that's only provided by pd0 as you can see from the table here as well so when you go to smaller formats like p3 4 5 6 10 11 and 13 you only output a certain range of variables in your outputs some of those will be binary outputs some of those will be ascii and some of those will be nmea um, some of those outputs are available in the workhorse navigator all of those presented in this table here are uh, some of those are not available in the new generation dvls dvl theory 101 how they do it theory of dvl uh, the D in DVL stands for Doppler. Doppler is a shift in frequency of a sound wave due to the relative movement of the source or the observer. You probably already experienced this once with an ambulance passing you by in the street. The ambulance uh, has a specific sound which oscillates at something close to one hertz. goes up and down and up and down. And as you're staying on the side of the street waiting for the bus, the ambulance seems to, the sound the, the song from the ambulance, the siren, uh, sound seems to accelerate as it's coming closer to you and decelerate as it's actually moving away from you. So there's a relation between the speed at which the vehicle is approaching a target and the sound that you hear. That is, you can hear something that is faster than the actual sound pro propagated by the ambulance if it's coming towards you, and you can hear something that is actually slower than the sound of the propagated by the ambulance as it's, as it's moving away from you. That's a Doppler effect in a nutshell. So a DVL essentially, think of it as a uh, speedometer, uh, four, uh, four beams, four, four speedometer uh, pointed in different directions. It would kind of look like this if you started thinking about it, but we package it differently. It has to go in the water. It has to work down a certain pressure, so it kind of looks more like this red DVL that we have behind it. But that's essentially the same principle. Each and every beam will actually provide a different speed uh, sensed by the pulses that we actually send out. We send specific frequencies, as we talked about before, and when they come back with a dwell effect on it, then we know that we move with respect to the bottom. And for the processing. Well, we use something called the broadband processing, which is something we patented a few years ago, um, which gives us accuracy on the single shot. Uh, here it's a representation of a typical DVL without broadband processing, which is usually a, called a narrowband processing. And we can barely read what's written over here. We cannot see, distinguish the face of this person. Uh, we can tell it's a person, kind of, but it's, it's really, really blurry. 
there's a lot of noise on this picture. Uh, on the broadband processing, then we actually can see the details. We can read exactly what this those words mean and see this face of this person that is actually getting a little bit of dust in his face. We can see he's smiling, but also kind of smirking a little bit. Um, and we can actually read uh, everything and look at every details on this picture. So as a result, uh, we can see that uh, this person here has been clocked at 81 kilometers per hour doing volcano boarding. That is sliding down at 81 kilometers per hour down a volcano. That can only be provided by this high accuracy processing that will bring out the details in this picture. Broadband processing accuracy on a single shot. Well, how? When some of the some of the system actually take only one picture at a time, which is an hour band processing, and get only one very very noisy uh, measurement, we take a lot more than that. We take a lot of samples at once, a lot of picture at once, and what we do is we send all those pictures to through a broadband processing uh, engine, and then we uh, use all those pictures to actually refine all those. Uh, measurements or snapshots that we took into a very accurate picture. And that is why we are the number one chosen DVL across all surface and underwater vehicles worldwide. Because we're fast and because we're accurate on every shot. Well, thank you very much for your time. This concludes our webinar from 0 to 20 knots in 20 minutes or less. Hope you appreciate it. Uh, this webinar and I hope you'll be checking in the next webinars that we have planned for you for the rest of the year Thank you very, very much again If you have any questions uh, Please refer to the emails uh, provided at the beginning of this session for the support uh, You can contact us uh, over the phone uh, as well We'd like to thank you for being customer of TRDI navigation product and please do not hesitate to contact us wherever you are on the planet